Since election day, this has been the most used word in politics. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. We have a mandate from the American people. He's being, a, being given a mandate to govern. Elected with a historic mandate. This is a mandate. Delivering a mandate. 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 I think we've got a mandate from the American people. But they're all wrong. Trump's win was not a mandate. Let me tell you why. Obviously, before we can assess whether Trump has a mandate or doesn't have a mandate, we have to define exactly what that is. And that's a little bit tricky because it, from my research on this subject, it seems like everybody has a little bit of a different definition when it comes to the actual data. And we'll get there. But obviously, we can turn to Google first and see what they have to offer us. A mandate. The authority to carry out a policy or course of action regarded as given by the electorate to a candidate or party that is victorious in an election. What that looks like for a president is they get into office and they interpret what message the American people were sending them with their votes. So this is like a carte blanche of you get into that resolute desk and sit there and you say the American people fully co-sign what I'm about to drop on this country. Whether that's actual specific policy proposals that they ran on in their campaign or whether it's more of a vibe and a sentiment and an emotion that they're gonna approach their presidency with. In Donald Trump's case, he said it was an unprecedented mandate given to him by the American people. He's about to approach his agenda, leaning in to honestly, and I think you guys should pre prepare for this mentally, to some of his worst tendencies. And there's a real danger in that. We'll get to it in a second, but first we have to look how other presidents have interpreted the mandates that the American people either have given them or thought they had given them. Listen to how big their wins were. Reagan 1984, famously the craziest electoral map I have ever seen. It is all red except for Minnesota, and he won by more than 18 percentage points in the popular vote. LBJ 1964, that was obviously see a huge referendum year when it came to civil rights and he won by more than 22 percent in the popular vote and finally coming in at 1972 the unlikeliest of unlikely characters to me when i was researching this richard nixon the biggest popular vote win in the modern american era by 23 percentage points Imagine an election these days being that wide of a margin. We're talking 10, 15 million votes. Americans, we could never. We're too polarized now. I know, I'm sure you're like, can we get something more recent? Like this is a, a bygone era and we need to look at the now. Y2K, George W. Bush obviously won by zero points and that zero points was he lost the popular vote. 2004, he only won by two points in the popular vote. Keep that date in mind, we'll get back to it. Obama became president in 2008, winning by seven points, and then won his second term by four points. Now we get to Trump and our current era where everything gets a little wackadoodle. He won by zero points because he too lost the popular vote in 2016. Rounding it out with 2020, Biden won by 4.5 votes. So these margins, way smaller than the ones that we were just going over. But when we look at 2020, Democrats came out and said Joe Biden has a mandate from the American people. There's that word that won't leave us alone. Everybody said it. It was Pete Buttigieg said it. Chuck Schumer said it. Nancy Pelosi said it. Biden himself said it. The American people have given me a mandate. And here's how I intend to use it. Something that I want to put in your mind as we approach what Trump's numbers were and how they stack up to the mandates we just laid out, the mandates we just laid out, if we believe in them yet, is Fox's coverage of Biden's 2020 win. Fox News explicitly said that because Biden's popular vote margin was below 3%, it was not a mandate. If we applied Fox News's logic, which we will throughout the rest of this piece, that too would mean that Donald Trump did not win a mandate. Let's look at why. The final tally of the 2024 election is still coming through somehow because we are so bad at counting votes in this country. I don't know how the fuck we're doing that, but the margin is down to 1.5, 1.6%, depending on the day. Trump won the popular vote in this country by less than 2%. When you think of proportions and percentages, does that sound like an overwhelming, demonstrative, clear endorsement from the vast majority of the American people? 
you get to answer that question for yourself. Everybody's going to have a different answer. When you look at the margins of the past that people have very comfortably marked as mandates from America, those are not the numbers that they're typically trafficking in. But yet we're out here watching these Republicans confidently walk up to the mic, as many Democrats did in 2020, and announce that Trump has a mandate. 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 But I want to do a little exercise to see whether the reasons that they're using to justify their calling Trump's win a mandate, do they stack up or do they not really tell the whole story? So why don't we do a little fact check of what Republicans are saying? The best place to start is really Elon Musk, who has been Trump's champion both in the ring and on the sidelines and online and in space and fucking everywhere to the point that Trump is like, this man will not leave me alone. Little bit of an SOS. But he posted this. Trump got the most votes ever received by a Republican candidate. That is objectively true. Can't deny that. But, and that will be the theme here, Trump also did get 4 million fewer votes than Biden did in 2020. So then someone might say, you know, Trump won the popular vote and nobody expected him to do that. And I'd say, true, but he also failed to win a majority of the popular vote, which means more Americans voted against him than actually voted for him. Not sure that sounds quite like a mandate to me. So then I could see somebody saying, well, Republicans won all three of the things they needed to win, the presidency, the House, and the Senate. True, I'm literally gonna go crazy, but it's also the smallest House majority that Republicans have had since America became 50 states. That's real risky. Not to mention, a trifecta has happened 47 times in the past. It's not necessarily a unique phenomenon. Okay, fine then. What about the Republicans winning 53 seats in the Senate? That's a majority. True, can't deny that. They are gonna own that shit for a minute. But here's another interesting little piece of data to chew on. Four Democrats, and bear with me here, won Senate seats in states that Trump won. That feels like a fucking tongue twister, which means Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada sent Democrats to the Senate while electing Trump with all of their electoral votes. That mismatch is not a good look for him considering in 2020 and 2016, there were no states that voted for Trump in the electoral college that then sent a Democrat to the Senate. Ugh, so I don't know, maybe 49 out of 50 states became more red than they were in 2020. And I'm like, okay, you got me there. That is an absolute fact. And that is a disaster for Democrats. We can all agree on that. And all of this to say is that these things that Republicans are saying and the talking points that they're parroting are not untrue. They are absolute facts of the results of this election, but they don't reveal the whole picture that we're looking at here when we're determining whether or not somebody has an overwhelming, clear, demonstrable mandate from all of the American people. Every single day I will be fighting for you. So now we get to that danger that I was warning you about. And that starts with Trump now gets to decide what is his mandate. I think it's very clear that if you took the mandate from the needs and desires and wishes and the American people begging as a whole, the mandate would be, we are going to bring down those fucking egg prices that everybody was mentioning when they went to the voting booth on election day. And that was the number one thing motivating voters and causing them to vote for Trump was they felt like he was stronger on the economy. But, and I know it's a little bit early to tell, so don't drag me for this. You can kind of see that that's not exactly where his head is at so far. He hasn't exactly come out here and said, the mandate for, from the American people that I was given is to rein in prices. And here's how I'm going to do that in my first 100 days. What signs can we see from the early days post-election to give us a clue what direction he's going to go in? The question that I keep coming back to is, are we going to get Donald Trump the president or are we going to get Donald Trump the man? Donald Trump the man is one who is going to prioritize himself over the good of the people on many, many occasions. And if that looks like going after his political enemies, which he has hinted at, if that looks like focusing on tax cuts for the wealthy and 
throwing tokens to people in his circle like Elon Musk, then that is going to be at the loss and at the frustration of a lot of the American public who endorsed more of his policy ideas that had to do with the greater good. And if there's anything we learned about the American people after this election, it's their voting based on the numbers in their pocketbooks, not the numbers on his hit list. So there's a little bit of a danger here because in this choose your own adventure, if you choose wrong, that's going to come back to bite you, girl. And I like to call this a little bit of the rubber band theory. You know when you pull a rubber band, the harder you pull it, the more momentum, the further it's going to go. And the American people really wanted that. That's why they showed up and voted Donald Trump in office. There was a little bit of self-destructiveness that Americans wanted to lead with. The burn it all down nature. But if you pull that rubber band too far, and it snapped right back in the direction that it came from. Just like that. We're gonna have to deal with here the fact that a lot of people, the non-MAGA Trump voters, they want that normalcy. They want that calmness. They want those moments where you can forget who's president for weeks at a time, the way most Americans have forgotten about Joe Biden. So sorry, Joe. If potential chaos ensues after, which Trump has signaled in his focus in these weeks after election day with his decisions and plans for the military, for the Department of Justice. These are all things that might cause the American people to say, hmm, did we go too far? And this has happened throughout history. We look at 2004 with George W. Bush. He was reelected by that two point margin I told you about. And Americans were like, hell yeah. He actually said, I earned capital in this campaign, political capital and I intend to use it. And use it he did in the wrong places. He decided that he wanted to privatize social security. Americans were like, the hell with that decision. And in 2010, flop for Republicans. They lost 31 seats to Democrats and lost their hold of Congress. Obama 08, I remember it vividly even though I was young. The economy was reeling from the Great Recession. People were not feeling the effects of economic growth with any sort of immediacy, because that's impossible, lest I remind you, into his first term. Not only that, Obamacare, unbelievably, not super popular at the time. Democrats lost 63 seats. That's like unfathomable in our era right now. They were fucking walloped. And guess what that led to the rise of? The Tea Party. If you know, you know. Because the American electorate looked at this and said, wow, we get nationwide elections again. Every member of the House is up for grabs. We don't like the way that it's gone. We understand the mandate that we gave you. We don't like what you did with it. So we're actually going to kick your ass out of power in the way that we can congressional elections. And that's one of the beauties of a mandate because it's not up to me if Trump has a mandate or not. It's what he wills it to be and will he has that he has that unprecedented mandate. But we get to test that immediately in the short term and a little bit in the longer term too. How? In the immediate future, we have Senate confirmation hearings for all of his cabinet appointments. These are going to be must-watch TV. And that is a real gut check to see who his loyalists are, not just in the people that he's nominating to these positions, but in the Senate Republican caucus. Who is going to sit there and say, anyone that you send to us, Donald Trump? Approved, approved, approved. No matter how inexperienced or out of left field a nominee might be, they're going to sit there and say, we got you. Already, that is proving not true. And we haven't even gotten to the confirmation period yet. Matt Gates, Republican senators were like, it's a bridge too far, Mr. Trump. I'm sorry, we can't do it. And Matt Gates, politely, as politely as he could, withdrew his name from consideration. So that litmus test of his mandate is not even holding up in his own Congress as of right now. And if you want to enforce the mandate that you have, you need Congress to confirm the picks to then carry out that mandate. That's the first hurdle. Second, and let's say the rest goes to plan, which it very well may be, we get to look at the 2026 midterms. I know you're like, can we get through 2025 first? I'm like, <laughs> no, we got to look at 2026 because it could be a bloodbath for Republicans if things go too far. That's one way to look at it. If Donald Trump leans into all of his worst tendencies, if this goes the dark path that all of these academics and liberal TV hosts are warning of, the American electorate could say, then we're going to rip Congress out right from under you. You better believe we're going to check and balance your ass. The other look at this, though, 
is what he decides to do is somewhat middle of the road and ends up being extremely popular with American people. That's definitely not out of the question. If people like the direction that America is going in in 2026 for the midterm elections, then Donald Trump's mandate might look strong in hindsight. If we are faced with an unhappy electorate that's getting unhappier by the day, part of the reason they decided no on Kamala Harris was because the majority of people disagree with the direction that this country is going in. If that continues to be the case, then it doesn't matter how strong Trump believes his mandate is. The voters could say, you're fired. I'm happy you're here because you can check and balance me as well in those comments. Throw us a like, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. I'd love that. And we'll keep sounding this out together.